Hello, my name is John Paddington. I am a senior manager at Ertico. I'm going to take you through Unit 3.2 Mobility as a Service Market Playbook. This course describes the Mars Alliance Playbook. It was created in 2020 by its members. It is actually available online and if you want to find out more you can go to the link here. But we wanted to talk through this because actually the playbook links to a lot of the other concepts in the other units and modules in this course. It should be noted that the Mars Playbook presents one model for deploying mobility to services. It's a great um, resource, it's got lots of really good ideas in it, but it is a model and if you're going to use it, you, you should customise it for your local conditions. I think the other thing that's worth noting, particularly for some of our uh, attendees from around the world, that a lot of this is aspirational and it might not be possible for you in the short term, particularly if you've got a limited public transport ready or limited budgets. And it's always worth noting, and just to reiterate what's been discussed in the other the other modules in this unit, that public-private relations are often a challenge. So this, this, this again, the Mars Playbook talks about these kind of ideal relationships, but it may not necessarily be the, the way you need to go. So let's let's talk about what the playbook covers. The first point is what a well-functioning market would look like from the service. Again, noting this is the the ideal world or it's an aspirational world but the things we'd be looking for is widespread availability data so that effectively all the different types of transport data are shared between lots of different organizations so things like timetables ticketing um, it's worth noting this is sort of the information i discussed in unit 1.2 um, it's easy for new organizations to get involved so it's not there's, there's not too much cost there's not too much bureaucracy and also if a organization wants to leave that they're not tied to a, a business model that doesn't work um, another important one is that there's good business opportunities that's fundamental really for the private sector they want to work in somewhere where there's, there's good opportunities for revenue and profits that the different partnerships so the different combinations of public and private uh, organizations add value to each other so they're not conflicting and not competing um, also achieving and I'll come to this later in the presentation about public interest opportunities so actually making a difference for sort of local and national governments and for the public in general um, and then this is the last point and this one is potentially the most challenging one and could be the most difficult to achieve is actually that no one party dominates um, and linked to that is that there's no antitrust measures now this is can be challenging because particularly if you've got an established large public transport operator it's a, moving to this kind of model is very different for them one thing to consider around the, the Mars playbook is that if you're from the public sector you might need new, new laws or governance models to implement the approaches identified. Um, data sharing privacy could be a particular one or you might need to update your existing laws. In all of this it's worth thinking about what are the incentives for the different organisations to do what you want to achieve. Ideally an incentive-based approach is better than a, a legal approach because then people do it because they want to do it opposed to because they're forced. Um, in the next few slides, we're going to sort of talk through some of the areas you might need to consider. From a public sector point of view, governance is typically designed and applied on a local or regional level, although there are some national national initiatives around mobility service. France, for instance, has it. Governance typically supports societal goals, so things like improving accessibility, reducing congestion, improving uh, air quality or reducing carbon emissions. So it also include how do you create a better experience for your users and also economic considerations. So it's important to have a, a good funding model for it. That doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be a fully for profit model, but it needs to be sustainable and sort of a longer term. Governments should really be built in collaboration with the public and private sector, including uh, market newcomers, startups, and some representation for the public. One thing I'll say is that governance is, is, is hard and you're unlikely to get it right first time. So, so we need to think about how you can update it or um, how you, you work with your, your stakeholders to refine the rules. And it's probably better to start being not too prescriptive or detailed and actually then add the detail as you learn more. On the next few slides, I'm going to talk through a little bit about some of the different areas governance and regulation can consider. You'll see on the slides that there's some text which is taken from the Mars 
playbook. I, I'm not going to go through that, but I'm just going to talk you about the, the topic more, and then you can have obviously you can read the other bits yourself. So inclusivity. This is the concept really of making transport open to all. Um, often and in the past public transport has been very difficult if you are disabled or you're elderly or perhaps you've got um, low educational standards so this is really thinking about how do you make it better for these people do you need any particular regulations or any particular standards you need to achieve to do that the next aspect is customer care so effectively how can your customers buy tickets uh, interact with the service and then potentially complain or seek compensation if something went wrong. This ties quite a lot to inclusivity. Um, often mobility services for a digital solution but that not be appropriate for everyone so you need to think about staffing and offices and other ways of contact. Perhaps the, the biggest area for mobility as a service governance is data because essentially without data none of this works. So when thinking about governance for data you've got to work out what is the data you, you need what needs to be shared how it's created how it's provided the privacy of customers so are you protecting people's names addresses where they've traveled because this can be very sensitive if it was leaked another consideration is commercial interests so getting the balance right of sharing data between different organizations to coordinate and to produce services but not limiting the different organizations ability to make profits or forcing organizations to sell intellectual property that they don't need to another consideration is the responsibilities of the different organizations involved so this includes the public sector private sector um, and any third parties involved in providing mobility as a service so th this could be quite informal it could be quite formal depending on how you want to create it but effectively, this is setting out what what the expectations are for how the different organisations will act, um, how they will work together, and create healthy um, com healthy competition or and sharing. Another area for governance is around user experience, and generally, this is about setting minimum standards. So, what you want to do is create a, a enough of a a structure so that people can use your service. But then you're also not limiting then other partners to create new and innovative solutions on top. So it's actually making sure that they can they can understand the data provided, it's provided in a clear and accessible manner. There's there's clear pricing rules and things such as uh, multiple language support or um, clear 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 rules are presented. The Mars playbook that also sets out a series of principles. I, I'm not going to talk through them all but you can see that they, they, they conveniently um, describe the words open open Mars uh, but I think some of the ones I'll highlight are that you, effectively you want to create an open ecosystem so allowing lots of different people to come and again come involved um, that people need to be involved in this that you need engagement so that you're creating mobility service with all the different partners and you're creating a new new solutions and then that that's the end of this training course. I just want to thank you for taking part in the course. Do have a read through the, the Mars playbook. That'll give you a lot more information. And feel free to ask questions in the on the platform if you've got any more further thoughts. Thank you.